How's it going guys? My name is Doe and today's video is going to be a little bit different than usual because normally I cover games like Dauntless and some more Dauntless and pretty much just Dauntless. But today I'll be covering a game called Shadow Arena and this is a action style game sort of like nothing I've played before but also really enjoyable nonetheless. And I have played other games that are in the action genre before such as Monster Hunter World and that's that's it. I'm man, I'm a square when it comes to games. What can I say? But I do like the games I play, and if I talk about a game, it's most because I enjoy it. And this is no exception. Now the game itself is a fantasy arena fighter, which I'm gonna go ahead and slap on the title Royale because this is a Royale style game. You have a zone mechanic, which in this game is called the Mist, and it makes it so you can't camp in the corner of a map for 20 years. That's no fun for anybody. And also the goal in this is to be the last person standing or the last two people standing if you're playing in duos because there are solo and duos in this game which is great and there's up to 40 people in a match. So it's a royale for all intents and purposes but what makes it unique is everything else about it. But before we get into that I need to say thank you to Shadow Arena for sponsoring this video. It means a lot y'all chose my channel and me for doing this so thank you very much. And uh, let's go ahead and learn about some good old Shadow Arena brother. Shadow Arena has a couple different ways to play the game. You have solo and team, which are pretty self-explanatory, either you're playing by yourself or with some buds if you have them, and you also have normals. These are the main game modes. Now normals are a matchmaking that doesn't affect your rankings, because there are rankings in this game if that's your thing, and uh, I'm pretty high up there, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty cracked in my mind, but I do say so myself. Once you have chosen your game mode you want to play, you can now choose your character. There are nine different selections of people you can choose from, ranging from melee focused characters or range focused characters that each have five unique abilities themselves, and every character also has two escape abilities, one being Dark Shift, which is your Q ability, and this turns you into a Black Spirit, where you can evade all attacks and stun surrounding enemies if they are near you. And this is very useful, but it's also on a very long cooldown, so use it with discretion. Your other ability is something called Blink, and this is where you teleport forward rapidly, gaining an invincibility state. This cooldown is a bit shorter, being one minute. Now, as for the other abilities that are unique to characters, I won't cover them individually because that would just take forever. Instead, I would just say that each character has a certain playstyle that is unique to them. You have characters that are more focused on ranged, and others that are on melee, also have blocking abilities, and things of the nature. So it's more about picking a character and just playing them since you like them. If you want to see what their abilities do, just pick a character or select them, and then hover over their abilities to see exactly what it does, because that is pretty straightforward. And it is important to read them since some abilities have follow-up attacks. For instance, Battle... Ba these names are going to be hard to say. Battle the Golden has attacks that you can follow up with by just pressing your left click. And I didn't know that when I first played him, and I got destroyed, and I still can't do it properly, but he's still pretty cool. And for the other characters I enjoy, I really freaking like Jordan Dukas, which I thought his name was Jordan Lucas the entire time. Like, I must be Lisdexic, Lisdexic, because I did not know what was going on there. But this is a super fun character for me, mostly because he has a freaking spear you can throw at somebody, and it knocks them on the ground if you land it. So you can be running from somebody, they're chasing you, you turn around, throw your spear, and then just start destroying them. Like, that is, that's a lot of fun for me, I can't lie. And if you're like my friend Zenny Phantom, you might really enjoy a character like Gerhard Schultz. And like I said, bro, I'm gonna butcher all these names, just so everyone's aware, all right? Full disclosure, these names are getting absolutely slaughtered. Gerhard Schultz is a sort of barbarian character with two giant axes, and his attacks are pretty wild. They're very, very nice for newer players, I think at least. So if you're looking for a character that has really crazy mobility, where you can run away or engage fights a bit easier than other characters, this might be the character for you. You also have a battle shout and all kinds of stuff. So this is a character I would suggest playing if you're newer and you want that sort of playstyle. And I won't recommend range characters personally. I'm not the biggest fan of them, but people do like playing them. So just pick your own poison. Characters that are ranged are going to be Ahan Kiris, uh, Her Heroin. I can't say that name any differently, otherwise TOS. And then Orwin. These are your ranged character selections or choices and people like playing them. I'm just not the biggest fan of it personally, like I get down with me some uh, some Jordan Dukas, tell you what. And one important thing to know that I had no idea about until recently is you can enhance skills with skill stones. You get those by getting master level for your, your hero or what have you, and then you spend them to make certain skills better. You can have two enhanced skills per match, but once you enhance all skills on a, a character, which are five, 
then you can have three enhanced skills per match, and all it does is make certain abilities a little bit stronger, which does help. But the nice thing is you have to earn these things by actually playing the game, which I can respect and appreciate. Now the last thing you can do before the match actually starts is you can choose an item from a sealed chest to bring with you into the match itself. When you choose an item, it normally has a sort of requirement to unlock when you're playing the match, so things that are really high in rarity, like, I don't know, a Shadow Lord's weapon, which just gives you more damage and whatnot, I believe. Uh, you have to kill monsters and heroes to obtain a total of 120 points to unlock this. Other things, like potions and whatnot, take far, far less. So, choose items that you think you can unlock reasonably, because if you don't unlock them, or even if you unlock them, I think they go away after that match. But, once the match is finished, you can get more items, which is kind of nice, and it keeps the ball rolling. Now, we are on to the actual, like, way the game's played, which, I will be honest, I'm not entirely sure. But I did win a game solo, which makes me a professional, just saying. The start of each game will have you in a sort of training grounds, or the arena grounds, I think. And this is where you can duel players and mess around for a little bit before the match actually begins, begins. And once that happens, all of your talents, or all of your skills, will be, like, grayed out. And then you'll be turned into a giant wisp and sent really far away based on the direction you're facing when you're in the training grounds. So your abilities are grayed out, meaning that you just can't use them, but you do get skill points to unlock them, and then past unlocking them, you can actually upgrade them. At the start of a game, you get one skill point, so choose an ability you want to use wisely. To do this, just hit, hold down control and then press either 1, 2, 3, or 4, whichever ability you want to use, that's the corresponding thing. And you can get XP to get more ability points or skill books from looting monsters or players. So getting XP, you get a lot from killing players, and a little bit from killing mobs and stuff, so it's just up to you. If you can find players, I would go ahead and try and duke it out, see what happens, because if you end up dying to that player, the nice thing is you don't die for real, not for some time. You get sort of like death protection for a while, and you can come back, and you don't lose your items either, which is really nice. Like It really makes it to where you can pick off from where you left off, and keep playing the game, and keep trying to stay in it. And now it's time for some mental gymnastics, because when you die, you don't lose your stuff, like I said. But if someone else dies, or if you kill someone, they drop items that you can take. And to further iterate on the whole death protection thing, it's actually a grace period, and you get four minutes from the start of a game where I believe you can just absolutely die as much as you want. You can completely int for as long as you want to, but once that four minutes is up, there'll be a prompt on the screen saying, Hey bud, you can't die anymore. You can't keep doing this, you gotta change. So at that point, if you do end up dying after that grace period's over, you are dead for real, and it is GG. And if you don't die, you win. So that's pretty much my basic description of this game, Shadow Arena, but there is obviously a lot more detail to it that I just am not equipped to discuss because I am more or less a noob, and this is my, my noob TED talk, because there are things like Shadow Lord Varigord you can kill, and when you kill them, you can go to altars, and they give you better gear. Like, there's just a lot more to it than what's going on. And there's also this freaking golem that can spawn, and it, like, one-shots you. That thing made me mad. Like, that was that was upsetting. I was, just, I was chilling, I was full health, and I was like, man, I'm doing pretty good. Dead. Just sent back to the freaking battle bus. It was not my ideal situation. So, there's a lot more to this game than I fully comprehend. But, as a new player... And as just someone who doesn't know what's going on, I enjoy it. And I think that's important for a game. I think it's good to enjoy a game when you don't fully understand what's going on. I really do. And in this game, I did enjoy it because it's just, at the end of the day, you're, you're casting abilities, you're going ham. It has a fantasy feel to it, and it's just a lot of fun. Now, a critique I have, and also sort of a PSA rather, is that there is a lot of CC in this game, but every single character has a form of CC, or multiple forms of CC. So I guess it's not that big a deal in the end of things. And I think the main thing here is to learn what the abilities of characters are and what they look like, so you can react to them. Because once you, do, once you know that, you'll be in a much better spot. But as a new player, that might be a little rough to get over, but it's definitely not impossible. Like, I've, I've come a long way in the, the semi-short amount of time I played this game. So I think that a lot of players can do it too. It's just sort of being vigilant what's happening and overcoming that. Going back in. Kill this guy. He didn't get stunned. Get out of here. I killed her. 
Now, some of the pros of this game are things that are also really beginner friendly, like the fact that there aren't that many third parties, especially in the beginning of the game. You do not experience that much third parties, at least I didn't. I didn't have to deal with people constantly trying to freaking gang up on me and then kill each other. It was more or less mostly just either 1v1s or 2v2s for the most part. So that's a really refreshing thing because in other games, you can hear shots like in like, you know, an Apex and stuff from around the world. In Shadow Arena, that's not the case. You can't, there, there aren't any guns except for, I guess, the, the boomstick thing, which is kind of cool. But you can't really hear abilities and stuff from that far away, which means that people won't just be out here like freaking hound dogs trying to come after you and ruin your, uh, your freaking dueling sesh. So that's a really big plus. And also, the fact that looting is really simple. You just loot over chests and whatnot, and if you get items, you can just spam G and equip it. Like, that makes it faster. That means that you're you're always doing something, and you're not sitting there having to organize your loot and decide on what to take and what not to take. And that just makes the game a bit more fun for me to play. So if you're into the sort of action-based gameplay, where it's skill shots and reactionary gameplay, then this is a game that I suggest checking out, because it might be up your alley, and you might enjoy it. And uh, again, thank you very much to Shadow Arena for sponsoring this video. It was very kind of you, and it's just all I can say is thank you again. And if everyone watched this video, thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, leave a like rating. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, leave them in the comments. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.